welcome to the latest episode of the CDA Institute's Expert Series. I'm your host, Josh Malm, and today we'll be speaking with Senior International Defense Researcher, Quinton E. Hodgson of REN Corporation. Here's an excerpt of our conversation, which focused on improving cyber resilience and protecting critical infrastructure in light of the Colonial Pipeline ransomware attack. How has the merging uh, of systems within critical infrastructure networks made us more vulnerable? Could a cyber attack targeting American critical infrastructure have trickle down effects in Canada? Yeah, I think so. First thing that we see is that um, more and more over the last uh, couple of decades, as we've evolved towards this idea of an Internet of Things or an Internet of Everything, is that um, people were concerned that a malicious cyber group would be able to traverse from the business networks to the operational networks of an organization. So rather than just impacting the email or the business uh, software that they may actually be able to manipulate the physical processes of a power plant or water treatment facility as we saw in Florida or a manufacturing company those kinds of things and so people are very concerned about the potential for uh, ransomware and other type forms of cyber attack to not just have uh, a nuisance effect but could actually lead to real consequences whether it's uh, life and death kinds of situations and so that's uh, obviously a significant uh, question going forward in terms of the interactions, you know, some critical infrastructure sectors and what the United States Department of Homeland Security is defining as national critical functions, um, it, there, there's uh, interdependencies between the United States and Canada. You think that there are about things like the electric grid, there are some connection points and interdependencies there, but also there are broader economic aspects. You think about the automotive industry, just the close relationship between Detroit and Windsor, for example, um, but just the, the patterns that they're, they're disrupted, just as we saw with COVID-19 over the last uh, year and a half, where supply chains that are very uh, closely run, you know, they can be easily disrupted. And so something like a cyber attack, even if the attack itself, the, the malware doesn't necessarily propagate the way we saw, for example, with NotPetya in 2017, you could still see the impacts of that kind of attack having perturbations throughout multiple uh, sectors and functions. And, and that's clearly a concern and something where it's very hard to anticipate what they may be because these are very complex systems. They're not just, you know, the electric grid in one area is connected to the electric grid somewhere else, but an impact to the electric grid could impact something such as the ability to provide uh, emergency response, for example. Between preventing, detecting, and responding to cyber incidents, uh, which one of these areas requires the most improvement? Well, I guess it, it would be unfair to me for me to say we, we need improvement in all three. Uh, so, you know, prevention is obviously where we'd like to be able to improve uh, the most. We, you know, stopping the attack before it's able to successfully gain a foothold on the network. But we also know that that's not going to be a bulletproof, bulletproof solution. We're we're never going to be able to completely lock uh, it, malicious actors out of networks and systems that we want to protect. So we do need to focus uh, also on speeding detection. You know. Um, the cybersecurity firm CrowdStrike, for example, has estimated in the past that the average dwell time of an adversary on a network is almost 100 days. So that means that uh, you know bad actors are getting onto networks and they're being able to uh, do reconnaissance, exfiltrate data, and potentially could have other impacts. And it's more than three months in some cases before they're even being detected by uh, cybersecurity tools and, and cyber defenders. So that's clearly something where we're already behind the curve. And then, as I was mentioning before, in terms of the response, there's a lot of response uh, planning that needs to be done that's critical, especially as you think about these things like uh, the ability of ransomware to have an impact on critical infrastructure that supports the life, uh, blood, and well-being and lifeline sectors in, in an economy, uh, not just affecting the economy in terms of its functioning, but also uh, public health and safety. So those are things where having good response plans that are not just focused in one area, but encompass the broad array of stakeholders that in terms of government, but also the private sector, non-governmental organizations is critical. And by the way, that's not to say that that's easy thing to do. You're bringing a lot of people together who have in some cases or interacted in the past, um, but may not know each other, uh, particularly when it comes to cyber incidents. 